him back. And it's time for another functional session. Okay, so putting all of that great practice that you've been doing down and up, putting it into practice into some more functional movements. Now you're gonna need a medium dumbbell or kettlebell for today's session. Something that you can comfortably hold overhead because that's the hardest thing you're gonna do with it. All right, we're gonna have four exercises all on one side and then on the other side, and then we're gonna repeat. So we're gonna have 16 minutes in total, 45 seconds of work, followed by 15 seconds recovery. All right, let's get to it, let's get in it. Okay, picking the weight up into your right hand and rack it up to the shoulder. Use the legs, push press it up to the ceiling. Now bicep is glued by your ear. Now here we're trying to avoid that side bend, we're trying to avoid the ribs popping open. Okay, so keep the ribs closed and make sure both sides of the waist are nice and even. Punch the weight up, here we go, we're gonna take it for a walk. Okay, overhead carry. So always thinking about that entire core stability, both sides of the waist long, ribs close together, punching the weight up. And you wanna know that we can be strong and stable in that core, no matter what movement we do, so the walking just adds the challenge. It means that we're creating that core stability while being dynamic. Go for a bigger wander if you have the space. Such a great functional core exercise. Three, two, one. Okay, safely bring the weight in and drop it down. Okay, we're gonna come and lie down on the back. We're gonna do a unilateral loaded hollow hold. Okay, so find that hollow hold position. The infant is fine. Legs up, weight goes up, and we're in. So the challenge here is that we're only loading the right side. So that left side tendon, work hard so it can keep your back evenly weighted in the mat. You're gonna find that you're, to, that you're going to want to swing towards the side of the weight. So to really focus on pressing the left side of the body down into the mat. Okay, locking out the elbows so you stack those bones in this position, punching the weight straight up. Holding, breathing throughout it. Only 10 more seconds. Come on, determination, mental strength. Holding, you've got this. Three, two, one, good. Safely bend it in, lower legs down. Drop the weight for a moment. Okay, this next exercise, we're gonna start stable. So you're gonna stand on your right foot. You're gonna place your left toe just super light behind you. You're gonna take a wood chop with a deadlift, single leg lift. So you're gonna take it across the body as you hinge back. And then as you come up, you power from the hips and you wood chop the weight across the body. Okay, hinge and power through the glutes. Core has to engage. So all of those anti-extension exercises that we've been doing, you're creating power through the glutes. And then the anti-extension core is working to stop you overextending into the back. Okay, that back foot is super light because the next round, we're gonna try it with the leg up. We're gonna work slowly on the way down, find the control, and squeeze and drive. Three, two, finish all you're on, and rest. Good work, okay. Next up, we are going to hold it still in the right hand, rack it up to the shoulder, and we're going to take that unilateral loaded squat, so load it on one side. Three, two, one. Okay, taking that nice squat form, okay? Try to tear the back in half, push the floor away, squeeze up, and then shoulder press. So it's not a thruster, it's going to be a squat and a press. Okay, all the way down, without twisting and giving into that weight. Okay, core is having to work. Squeeze up, and then same thing, ribs coming down, bicep by the ear. Okay, here, really train yourself to be aware of your body and where it is in space, so that maybe when you're in some of your hit sessions or you're doing any of your conditioning wads, you can move without having to think about it so much. Good, okay, rest. All right, well done. We're gonna do those four exercises all on the other side. So pick it up into your left hand, rack it up, and use the legs, push press it all the way up. Punch the weight of the sitting bicep by your ear, ribs closed, waist long each side. And take it for a little walk. 
Now keep, I know I keep saying it, but keep punching the arm up. When the elbow starts to soften and bend, it makes it a lot of work for that arm. And it's not about that today, it's about your core.
remember you can always have that little bend if you need. So just noticing if one side is easier to stay more stable than the other. So I find this side much harder actually. Woo! Temptation to twist towards the weight is high. <laughs> Come on, you can do it, we're so nearly there. 10 more seconds left. Breathe. Switch those glutes on, curl up a little bit higher. Three, two, one. Oh, that elbow comes in. And we'll come all the way up. Okay, start slowly with this next exercise. All right, right foot is down. Even do the first one with the toe on the floor if you want. Okay, three, two, one. Right, bend the knees, hinge the hips back. Okay, really load the hamstring and glutes, sweep the weight across the body, and strong, powerful, drive through the hips, core is strong as you twist the weight across the body. So if you think of all of those single leg drills that we have done, when we were doing flamingos with the arm circles, when we were doing those overhead press on one leg, we were setting you up for this woo, tough dynamic movement. All the core cool balance. Three, two, one. Woo, just about had that last one. Again, last exercise on this side. We have that unilateral load squat. So loading on one side of the body into that press. Three, two, one. Okay, take it down, squeezing up, and press. Okay, core, think about that core, not allowing yourself to overextend as you get tired. Switching it all up. Good work. Push. Keep it nice and clean. Refine those movements. All right, finishing last squat. Three, two, and one. Beautiful. Okay, we just have the other side to do. So rack it up. Okay, okay, is that cool? And push press for the weight all the way up to the ceiling. Bicep by your ear, punch. Uh, both sides of the waist, even ribs down. Here we go. Last little wonder of the session. Now let's try and tic tac. Hinge, hips back, hinge, hips back. 
find something to focus on. Power in the glutes, come all the way up. Weight comes across the body. Okay, so the weight is drawing that diagonal line. Good, really feel the tripod in that standing foot. So the heel, the ball of the big toe, the ball of the little toe. Okay, ankle stability working, glutes and hamstrings working, core working. When you're working with control, then when you jump, you're putting about four or five times your body weight into that foot, so into that instability. And that's where over time, some of those injuries can come up. And finish. Good. Well done. Well done. Okay, that wasn't an easy session. Good job. So yeah, with that single leg, if you find that there are wobbles and instabilities there, I mean, I know that we were going across, we're also adding that extra element and um, challenge, but if there's instability there, then just think what happens when you then jump and load into a leg. And when you jump and load into a leg, you're putting about four or five times your body weight into that. So if there are little instabilities, that's why maybe there are knee niggles or hips or anything like that, or maybe it's just over time. So really adding some single leg drills in and where you're loading one side of the body can really, really help to just bulletproof all of those joints and you know, make sure that your body is safe for all of the fun things that you want to do. All right, gang, we have one more day together. All right, coming up is the final plank challenge. Okay, get excited, get pumped for it, um, and I will see you for a spicy one tomorrow. Yes! <laughs> <laughs>